you could just think of one person that either you're always in trouble with or you always feel misunderstood and you just don't know how you get to a certain point of the conversation. Well, it's hard to win at any game if you don't know how to play the game. So let's take a look at transactional analysis and see what player you are in the first place and see how you can win the game of effective communication. As much like math, it can get extremely advanced, but let's just go look at the basic level of it. And if you have any questions, just comment down below what they may be, and I'm gonna answer them the best that I can or make another video to clarify certain things. I want us to look at this as three different sections. These are known as the ego states, according to Dr. Eric, is that we have a parent's ego, an adult ego, and a child ego. So let's get into parents. The parent ego is formed by the beliefs and values that you grew up with most likely likely from your, either your parents or some sort of parental figure. So it's something that you have adapted when you couldn't question authority at the time. The adult ego is when it comes to reasoning and looking at the database itself to come to a logical conclusion. The child ego is something that is more feeling based. Our internal reactions to external events. All right, so these are the three ego states, simply put, the parent, adult, and child. You can see here that I separated the critical parents, nurturing parents, adult, adults, it's the same thing because the logic and reasoning is the same and an adapted child versus the free child. So let me just define each of these really fast. The critical parents is what you would imagine as a parent that tends to be more controlling, but also the protector of the child. So they may be controlling because they wanna protect the child, but either way, it could be a positive or negative. You're controlling, you're saying, this is what you need to do. This is how it has to be done. And this is how you're going to do it. So they're very much so either critical or controlling. The nurturing parents, on the other hand, is what you would imagine this very loving parent. You would say a very motherly figure, even if it wasn't your mother. I'm not talking about your actual mother, but I'm talking about the love, the nurturing. So on the positive side, it could be love and abundance, right? But on the negative side, it could be overbearing and, and too much. So there is a positive and negative to both of these just to point it out, but I'm not going to go too deeply into that. Just know that the critical parent tends to be a little bit more direct in telling you exactly what to do, what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. And then the nurturing parent tends to be a more embraceive parent. Again, adult is just the logic reasoning, seeing data for what it is in the present and then make drawing some sort of conclusion based upon that. Adaptive child is what you would imagine, a child that is receiving from a parental figure of, okay, based on past experiences, what brought me to some positive result or negative results? So they're the child who's going to adapt, as this name suggests, to the situation, to the environment based on their past experience. The free child, on the other hand, is a little bit more spontaneous, they're creative, and they tend to be more ignorant and do as they please, so to speak, and they are very much so in the moment. So there it is. We have three ego states. We have the parents, adult, and child. Just know that parent and child are complementary. Adult and adult are complementary. And so what I mean by this is that let's say you are playing the role of the critical parent. That means you are expecting the response of an adaptive child. So critical parent is complementary the most with adaptive child. However, a critical parent or any parents, nurturing or critical, they expect a child's response, whether it's the free child or adaptive child. The most complimentary for critical parents is the adaptive child. Most complimentary for nurturing parent is the free child. But with an adult, somebody who's playing an adult card, which is logic, reasoning, database, present-based, is with another adult who is thinking in the same way. So if Spock was talking to Spock, then they would have a perfect conversation, right? So just think about it that way. Spock talking to Spock is adult to adult.
<laughs> so this is where it gets very interesting. So please stick with me here. I'm going to lay out a scenario. So let's just say roommate A walks in, going to roommate B, and being a critical parent. Critical parent saying, "Look, the dishes." Are dirty. It's a mess. What I need you to do is that every time you have a dirty dish, do not put it in the sink. As a matter of fact, there shouldn't be nothing ever in the sink. You should always wash it when there's a dirty dish. Don't even put it on a drying rack. Don't put it in the dishwasher. You hand dry that. Take a towel, hand dry it, and put it on the shelf. They're being very direct. They're being very demanding, critical in this case, and they're telling the child. Exactly what to do. Now, roommate B comes in, and as we know, the most complimentary meaning what roommate A is hoping, best hope, expectations, dreams, <laughs> is that roommate B will react as an adaptive child. So, adaptive child would probably say something like, "Oh, you know what? I'll do exactly that." I'll do exactly that. Whenever I have a dirty dish, I will clean it. I will dry it with a towel, and I'll put it back on the shelf right away. There will never be a single dirty dish in the sink. However, roommate B comes in as an adult, and what does an adult say? Roommate B comes in and says, "I, I didn't know this bothered you so much. How can we do this in a way that works for both of us? Because sometimes I'm in a hurry. I'm in a rush to go to work." I can't clean it every single time that I have a dirty dish after I eat something. Sometimes I'm in a rush, right? So, is there a way that we can adapt this? Is there a way we can work together, right? What's the main cause? What's the main reasoning? Is it because you think flies will come in? Is it just that you want the sink nice and clean, so I should just leave my dirty dishes in my room? What is the actual problem? How can we solve this together? So they. Tend to ask questions: what, who, where, why, and in order to really just resolve, get database in order to problem solve together as adults. <laughs> okay, they're being Spocks again. Okay, just think about it as roommate B is trying to be a Spock. Now, roommate A again is a critical parent. They're expecting, or their highest expectation is for roommate B to respond as an adoptive child and just listen to what they're saying. So roommate A comes in to hear this adult Spock, and what often happens is if you're playing a child or a parent, an adult sounds like this person doesn't understand me. They're not listening to me. They're in a whole different world. They're 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 not even responding. They're not even properly responding to what I'm telling them right now. It often feels dismissive. So roommate A takes this as this person is dismissing me. Roommate B is dismissing me, okay? And oh, I guess none of this even matters. I I, I guess we're we're just gonna do whatever we want, okay? I guess I guess I'll just leave my dishes wherever I want, and I'll, I, I I I we're just going to be one of those roommates that we just annoy each other because that's what we do, and you can't even listen to what I say because you never listen to what I say, and so they get very emotional. And when we're in our feeling based, then that means roommate A has gone from critical parent to now switching into a free child. So what happens in this game is that we tend to switch roles as the conversation moves along. So now roommate A becomes the critical parent demanding, and in response to roommate B being an adult, they become the free child. They explode. Right, they're becoming emotional. They're becoming erratic. You don't listen to me. You, you just don't even want to. Da 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 da. da. They're becoming emotional, feeling based. Now, a good move that roommate B is going to do is that they're going to switch roles. They see this is happening. I'm going to switch role into the nurturing parent. So, what does the nurturing parent do? So, roommate B becoming the nurturing parent because, you know what? Maybe I don't hear exactly where you're coming from. Please tell me exactly how you feel. Tell me how you feel. Tell me what it is that truly bothers you. And not going into problem solving because that would be adults. Just being loving, nurturing, and open. And with a free child, open calms them down. 
right? It's because they're free spirit, they're creative, and they're open. Okay, so they express their feelings, express their feelings. Oh, I feel this, I feel that, I feel that. And at the end of it, they have nothing left to say, and they calm down. And then now what we may be can do is switch into adult. But now that free child is calmed down, roommate A is calmed down, roommate A can also switch into adult. Now roommate A and roommate B are both adults talking to each other, Spock on Spock, beautiful combination. And now their conversation can resolve, they can problem solve together, let's say. Where things can go wrong, <laughs> where they typically do. So let's go back into the scenario where roommate B is now a nurturing parent. Roommate A is free child, expressing their feelings, yada, 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 this is how I feel. Because the free child is a child, emotion, feeling-based, they might say things that they don't quite mean, they don't quite know what they're saying, so they're being immature in some way. And so they say something that triggers roommate B. How dare roommate A you say that I don't ever do the dishes, that I leave this whole apartment into array, that I leave trash around. Why would you say something like that? I don't do that. You know what I've actually done? You know what I've actually done for this whole apartment? I've cleaned the dishes even after you sometimes. I've swept the floors. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. And now roommate B goes into the critical parent. So now roommate B is critical parent. Roommate A is free child. Whew, how did that happen? Let's take a pause real second because in the beginning, roommate A was the critical parent and roommate B was coming in as an adult. But you see how quickly things can shift around. Our roles can shift based on just the decisions we make based on how we interpret things. And then we can react in different ways. So something that could have been resolved can become argumentative really quickly. So the important thing here is to understand what role you are playing and what role the other person is playing and how to best play the game. So if we know that the critical parent and adaptive child are complementary, right? Nurturing parent, free child, complementary, and adult, adult is complementary. Your best strategy is to meet them where they're at as the, the first off. Because what ultimately this is, like I said before, is it's a power dynamic and we're shifting power dynamics. I wanted to clarify that you meet them in the complementary counterpart to build rapport so then you can shift the role in your favor and because you're leading they are more likely to follow you. I do want to introduce to you the split because this is where people get so frustrated when it comes to thinking that you know what card you're playing. So the split happens when, let's say, person A, adult, person B, adults. It should be a very pleasant back and forth conversation. But let's just see what, what happens. Okay, so person A, let's say, comes in and they say, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. Person B comes in and says, oh, you should eat. You're hungry, you should eat. And then person A comes in and they say, yes, but I, I just don't have time right now. I'm really working really hard. And then person B says, oh, wh why don't you do Uber Eats? Person A says, yes, but I don't really have money right now. So person B comes back with, oh, so why don't you just eat some of that yogurt in the fridge? Person A says, yes, but I want something more substantial. And while this is happening, person A seems to get more and more irritated. Yes, but I need to do this. Yes, but uh, uh, yes, but yes, but and yes, but is the common theme here. Okay, this is what we call a split. Because what's really happening here is person A is posing as an adult, playing as an adult. 
But what person A is really being is a free child, and person B is playing the adults. They're coming up with practical solutions to take, so you cannot be hungry anymore. But the person A is coming in pretending to be an adult, <laughs> but really what? Their real need and what they actually want as a reaction is a nurturing parent. They actually want the other person to say, "You know what? Let me make something for you real fast. I have a little bit of free time. Let me make something for you real fast." They want the nurturing parent, and that's why all of a sudden they're getting more and more frustrated. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but you don't understand. Yes, but okay. Do you not get me? Do you not care? That is the languaging of a free child. So, posing as a certain card, but actually, deep down inside, being a different card is a common, very common. And I can think of multiple times where I've either done it myself, or I've been in a situation where there's just a bait and switch. There's a bait and switch, and Oftentimes, you don't know it's happening. The person who's doing it and the person who's it's being done to, so to speak. And it takes a person who's very conscious about this in order to catch. Oh wait, they're becoming frustrated because they're actually being a free child, and they want me to be the nurturing parent. But unless you catch on to that, this can easily turn into an argument, because in reality. Person A, who's posing as an adult, is actually being a free child, expecting a nurturing parent. And Person B over here is confused, so confused because <laughs> they think they're talking to、uh, an adult ego state. What they really should be doing, technically, if they want a peaceful conversation, is to go into nurturing parent. So. It gets more complicating than this, but that is the basics of it. If you have any questions, comment down below. Keep this in mind as you go along out there, and something happens in a conversation where you feel some sort of shift, some sort of energetic shift happening, and you don't know why it's happening, or you feel triggered in some type of ways. Something triggers you, and all of a sudden you shift, you shift in your energy. You have to stop and think about the transactional analysis that's happening. Who is in what ego state? What card are you playing in this game? And what power dynamic are you currently in? Is it parent-child, child-parent? Is it adult to adult? Is adult talking to parent or child? It's, when you understand this, you can shift in yourself, and you could go, "Oh, this is why we're." Getting disconnected, or this is why the energy of this conversation shifted, and so this is just the basics of transactional analysis. If you want to learn more, please comment below. Let me know if you found this interesting at all. Please let me know, especially if you're in sales or if you're an influential person or if you're in a leadership role. This is very important to know. All right, I hope to see you guys on the next video. Remember, get out there and raise your vibe.